Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of One Football Debate, where we tackle the biggest questions from the football world. Today we're talking about who is the player of the season. Yeah, we're getting close to the end of the season, so we're going to work out who's been that one standout player. On the show once again, we've got the one, the only, Mr. Statman Dave, and we've got Steve House and the fans' favourite. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Once again, we're going to give you 30 seconds to put forward your case. We went with Dave last week, so today we're going to go with Steve. You've got 30 seconds, let's go. It's quite simple, mate. The, the player of the season has got to be Mo Salah. He come from nowhere, adjusting to the league, obviously the second time round, adjusting to the league. 29 goals, 29 games, playing in a team that can't even lace the boots of Manchester City over the course of the season. Mohamed Salah is the absolute player of the year. Now, I know Dave's going to go with someone who's had a very good season, but you're not going to touch Mo Salah for this one for me. There we go. Dave, whenever you're ready, let's kick it off. Let's get some correct stats back onto the boys. He's actually scored 29 goals in 31 games. Let's not pretend that we know stats, Stephen, when you don't. In terms of the guy I've gone for, it's got to be Kevin De Bruyne. Manchester City have taken the league by storm. They've been dominant. But who is the guy that's really picking the lock in the final third? It's Kevin De Bruyne. He's been the best player in terms of attack, in terms of defence. He's been absolutely fantastic. Arguably, one of the most complete midfielders in European football. And for me, it's, it's not even a, a question. Liverpool haven't won anything for years with Mo Salah. They're still not winning anything. So how can Mo Salah be Premier League player of the season without, obviously, winning anything? There we go. Those are open arguments. Stephen Housen, I'm going to let you come back because uh, I didn't like the way that Dave came for you there with them stats. So you can go first as a reply. Dave, what I actually said was 29 goals and 29 starts, which is what he's got. He's come off the bench a couple of times. So uh, he's 29 29. He's got six in seven in the Champions League. He's got two in two in friendlies. He's got one in one for a club friendly. He's got one in one in the FA Cup. Mohamed Salah has put in a level and consistent performance. And he's done it without the team around him as well. Because let's face it, you look at that midfield three that sits behind the, albeit very good forward three that Liverpool have got. And that midfield three wouldn't look out of place at Stoke. And Mohamed Salah is finding the platform to go and do what he has to do. Now look at the midfield that Kevin De Bruyne is a part of. And he is an excellent part of it. And he's probably going to be the second best player in the Premier League this season. But Mohamed Salah takes this all day long. You've got to look at where they're coming from. This Manchester City team have completely dominated the Premier League. So it's easy to look good in a good team. And like you said, Liverpool aren't going to win anything because they're not a very good team. But Mohamed Salah deserves to win something because he's been that good this season. And then your reply to that, Dave? Yeah, it's quite interesting. You know, you talk about squads, you talk about how teams are geared to play. This Liverpool team is basically geared to create chances for Mo Salah. You know, playing on that right-hand side, looking to play as a bit of a poacher. But you're thinking Firmino has plays a false nine. He does work for Mo Salah both in attack and defence. It allows the Egyptians to pretty much be lazy in a defensive sense, which is a complete flip opposite to Kevin De Bruyne. Not only has he got the most assists in Europe this season, 15 assists in the Premier League, which is pretty incredible. You're thinking about his defensive contribution. He's turned the ball over more in the opponent's half than any other Premier League player in terms of his tackles, 11 tackles and 15 interceptions. So for me, the, the work rate, the all-round ability of Kevin De Bruyne just means that, yes, he's in a better team. Yes, he's in a better midfield. But boy, is he making the most out of that in terms of chances created as well. He's the top of Europe again. So in terms of creativity, what Kevin De Bruyne does, he's taken himself to the elite level. If you think David Silva controls the tempo, Kevin De Bruyne picks the lock for Manchester City. Without Kevin De Bruyne, City are stale in possession. They're boring. They're a terrible side to watch. So without the Belgium and Manchester City side, you're losing something massive. And for me, that's why he's a key cog in this side. Yeah, everything in Liverpool is geared towards getting Mo Salah to score goals. But De Bruyne is doing everything he needs to do as a central midfielder. And you're talking City. They're going to beat Chelsea's record of most points in a single season. They could even get over 100 points, which hasn't been done since about 1942. Simple. Kevin De Bruyne, player of the season. So, uh, Steve, I'll give you a little chance to reply in terms of, is Mo Salah just a goal hang or is he bringing more to Liverpool than that? No, he's absolutely not a goal. Like he's creating chances for himself. He is part of a very fluid forward three for Liverpool, which is, he is a massive part of that. I'm not sure that they're set up for him to thrive as much as Dave sort of suggesting. I think they're set up to be hard to mark as a three, and Mo Salah is the one that's able to take part of that. As Dave mentioned, though, Manchester City are probably going to go on to a record points total, and that's not down to one player. That's down to the fact that they've got a team and a good coach. Liverpool's position and Liverpool's... Um, 
season that's gone into the Champions League and, and the position that they find themselves in the Champions League is on the back of Mo Salah alone. He's carried this Liverpool team far beyond what they should be when you look at all their component parts. Mo Salah is the one that has lifted them out of the bang average side that the rest of that squad is and he's making them a contender and he's going to make them a contender in the Champions League because of how good he is and then we'll truly find out just exactly whether it is De Bruyne or Mo Salah, won't we? So then if we flip the script uh, to you, Dave, if Salah was in the Manchester City team and then uh, Kevin De Bruyne was in the Liverpool team, who would have the most impact in the alternative squads? See, I think Kevin De Bruyne would have a massive impact at Liverpool. You know, Steve's already mentioned the weakness of their midfield. If Kevin De Bruyne was in that Liverpool team right now with Mo Salah, they go on to win the Premier League. And that is the fact. And I think if you switch it around, Mo Salah goes to Joseph City, Kevin De Bruyne moves. You have a different fact there. I think that Liverpool, you know, would win the Premier League. City may struggle without Kevin De Bruyne. I mentioned how he's so critical in that final third. It's his crossing and his ability to create goals for his teammates. It's not the pass before the assist. It's actually the assist that Kevin De Bruyne is consistently making. That is why, for me, he's so important. Steve talks about the, the Champions League and how Mo Salah's carried Liverpool to where they are. Who have they played? What, Porto, who are second in the Portuguese League and a severe team that pretty much, you know, rolled over Manchester United. But it was a poor United team this season in the Champions League. What I want to talk about now, though, is big games that Kevin De Bruyne has influenced this season. You think about the, the three goals that he scored against the top six sides have all been absolutely vital important to Manchester City winning those games. And arguably, this is why they're so ahead, is because they're beating the guys around them. Mm. You think Kevin De Bruyne has scored the winner against Chelsea, a fantastic goal out of nothing. You think the opener against Arsenal, which allowed City to then dictate the play. Arsenal had to come on to them and they just, you know, picked them apart, 3-1 win. Then you think the second goal against Spurs and a really important part of the game yes, one up early goal. The game and who turns up again? Kevin De Bruyne. You're just not seeing that from Mo Salah. You think about the game against United recently, the 2-1 win for Manchester United. Mo Salah's still in Ashley Young's pocket. Kevin De Bruyne doesn't get pocketed by anyone and that is why he is Premier League and even European player of the season. So then to flip it around to you, um, Stephen, if uh, Salah was in the Manchester City team, what would he be doing? Or and vice versa? Manchester City is a wonderful football team at the moment and you can take pretty much every single player, including Kevin De Bruyne, out of that team and still not really notice much of a difference. He's saying, yes, Kevin De Bruyne's got 15 assists. Amazing. Well, Leroy Sané's got 11. David Silva's got 11. It's not like this Manchester City team don't create chances without Kevin De Bruyne. Liverpool don't score goals without Mo Salah. It's as simple as that. And let's already talk about the games that they played. And the last time that City faced against Liverpool, one goal, one assist for Mo Salah. Match winner. <laughs> Match winner? Are you crazy? Did you even Short watch that sweet. game? Absolute rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, Match lads, winner. I want to get those 30 seconds closing arguments as to why your player should be the player of this season. Stam and Dave, I'm going to let you go first. Ready? Three, two, one. We talk about Kevin De Bruyne and how he doesn't have an impact on this Manchester City team. Yeah, the players are getting assists. But in terms of chances created, he's nearly got twice as many as any other City player, which shows his impact at Manchester City. The best team in the Premier League this season, one of the best sides in Europe. And Kevin De Bruyne is making things happen, both in the defensive sense, but also on the ball. He's been unbelievable. 15 assists. The guy is a genius. And he deserves it over, over Kevin De Bruyne, over Mohamed Salah, not just because of what he's, his impact of the side this season, but how much better he was than last season. And that is the big thing. And that's why he deserves player of the season. There we go. And to you, Stephen Housen, three, two, one. By the looks of it, Mo Salah's going to score probably 40-plus goals this season. How <laughs> can you not again. give somebody player of the year when they're doing that? Regardless of where his team come, like I said earlier, it's easy to shine in a good team. It's harder to be the one that carries an average team beyond their natural position. And that is exactly what Mo Salah has done this season. A very deserving player of the year for me. So you've heard the closing argument. So if you want to decide who's won today's debate, make sure you click the button in the video and hit us up in the comment section. Once again, thank you for joining us, Stan and Dave and Steve House. And make sure you check out their amazing YouTube channels that we'll have in the description. And no doubt the lads will drop a comment as well so you can have a little banter back and forth with them. Once again, I've been Anton Allen. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next week. Peace.